Hello my beautiful music makers. So today, in this video, we are having a look at Contact 8. We ain't going over everything that's new. We're gonna have a look at the new tools integration that we've got, as is the trend at the minute, making everything way more accessible and giving you tools to utilize and create in maybe an area you're not as finessed in. Inside Contact 8, Eight, Native Instruments have introduced two tools, which are kind of like plugins that go before your sound libraries, and they're called Chord and Phrase. Let's have a look at them. To demo right here, I've got uh, Alicia's Keys Up. Piano just makes the most sense to demo sounds to me for most things. First thing, we'll look at chords. The idea of chords is instead of having to learn stuff like you can instead utilize this tool to help you create ideas and things maybe in a scale that you don't know. If you're not familiar with, which was A major, you might not know how to translate chords and melodies into different keys like that. The idea of this tool is to enable that ability, especially if you're something like a guitar player, you play a brass instrument, translating something over to keys can be a lot harder. This sort of tool is gonna to help you out a lot in that case. So when you've got an instrument loaded up, now we have the ability down the side here to stack your instruments and load up tools. So if we select our tools here with a double click and we need to bring the tools library up here, we have chords and phrases. Now I'm quite excited about the fact that this looks like it's a library and a menu and chords and phrases is just part one of what they're gonna start doing here. We can load up chords and at first it gives us a preset menu of what's gonna come up. We can completely customize everything we want inside it. But let's take chill, it's a nice example. Each one gives you a little listen at the progressions. And you can go through those in your own time. So if we double click, that opens up chill. So we now see over here in the top left, we've got tool, chill, and then Alicia Keys. And that's represented here in our stack as well. We can see we've got the chords chill function and then we've got Alicia Keys right below it. So this is kind of an odd layout looking thing. But now if I press one key, here we get a whole chord. If we press another key, next chord. Going across our progression there. Now they follow across through all of the white notes on your keyboard. So as you can see here, none of the sharps are highlighted <clears throat> and you can see it goes through one, two, three, and four across an octave each time. So if we start here at C, and then we're into our next octave. So let's go over how this thing works because it's kind of odd looking. Up here, the very first thing, we've got a dice. This just lets us randomize the entire thing. This links in nicely with the key over here where we've got a little padlock. So if we're working on a set track and we're looking to get a chord idea in here, we would first look to set our key, for example here, F sharp or G flat in a minor scale. We could lock that. When we hit the shuffle here, or the dice, roll it, randomize, whatever you want to call it, um, it's going to shuffle those up, but it'll retain our key for us here, which is super important. You don't want to be changing everything over. Now we've got a new set of chords loaded. We can go. Now for me, they're definitely not as nice as what we had before, which was a nice, which was a nice preset of chords in terms of chill. And they were set to be in that key. They're not being forced into it. That makes a huge difference to me. Now each circle here represents our key. Like I said, from C through to B. You can see each one's highlighted when we press each key. We've got a couple of things that we can do with each one. If we select it or hover over it, if we hover over it, we've got the ability to first search for a different chord type, as it were, instead of a whole preset, an individual chord in this instance. For example, we can go chain of fifths. Catching up with you. Once we've clicked that, we can exit away and it will have that chord now loaded up for us. We can randomize like we could before. 
just to scan through and give some ideas. And we can do that with each one as we go through. We also have the ability to record a chord, which is really quite nice. So if I was to play something that is in F sharp, for example, so if I was to play something that was in F sharp, like, that will then be recorded in for me here. I didn't happen to like that idea. We can always change it out for... And we take record off. So we can build our own chord sets as well, which we can then play across a single octave. Now here's something you really like, you're not limited to having these inside contact. It doesn't have to be a contact instrument. For example, in Logic here, I often use uh, the synth alchemy, or synth sampler, rompler, it does pretty much everything. So what I can do here is I can take this little icon and I can drag it out and drop it into my DAW. It's gonna put a different chord on every single channel, but it does give us all of the chord information as we want it. So I can very simply put these chords in a sequence that I'm after on a completely separate instrument or just contain them within my door to put on anything else. And now I'm able to use the same chord structure that I've created inside contact with Alchemy. As you know, if you followed this channel, I've used the NKS keyboard since its inception, the little NKS 25. See, I've still got it boxed here. One of my gripes with that system was when you pressed like a single key to get a built-in chord or a more complex chord than you were able to play on say your 25 keys, which is another great thing. Um, it was always rigid, just bong. It was all the keys exactly at the same time. They've added some humanize and strum function in here, which makes the world of difference. So for example, A nice sounding chord, but it's a bit rigid. Your fingers never quite hit like that. Middle finger always kind of hit first and then everything else kind of rolls into it, right? Unless you're incredibly talented and you can do it flawlessly. There's always that kind of natural like strum. So here you can see the strum for each key as it's represented. We can push that up and we get that more natural effect. It's also a way of playing the piano that can be quite interesting. Now, because of the way this works, we can automate this to be there for some, and not for others, or just very subtle amount, dial it back, in a bit more, very extreme. Now this combined with humanize, which ever so slightly moves the velocity, uh, release of the notes it would seem. I don't have a manual by the way, because this is still a beta. not quite the same chord each and every time. Yeah, we're getting some subtle differences over and over. Yeah, exactly the same note each time. Pretty wild at 100, but a little bit. Not gonna quite get the same velocity each time, combine that with some strum. You've got such beautiful flexibility in there. So that is the chord tool. It's nice. I would recommend you dive into it, have some fun with it and create some fantastic ideas. And hell, try it out on something other than just a piano. So let's have a look at the phrases tool next. Now we notice here we can't stack tools like we could with the instruments so we have to remove our chill tool right here. Uh, select tools and we've got our tools open again. Let's have a look at phrases and now we can scan through these and get an idea for what each one is.
Let's go on then. Upright band bass. Okay. So we've got the same kind of layout as in we're using all of the main white keys, no sharps to trigger each thing. But we've got a slightly different layout in that we have to press the key to see each one. That's because we've got a MIDI progression inside each key. <coughs> now we can do the same thing before in that we can mix it up as much as we want. And it's going to pick a different preset for us. That's rife for some house drums, is it not? <laughs> and if you do want to see each individual one, you can just click on these. And say we want to mix things up and we like a particular one, like this for example, we can lock this, shuffle, and that one's still going to be there for us, even though all of the others have changed. Allow us to mix and match whatever we want in that regard. <coughs> Same as before, we've got the option to lock the key, so we could lock ourselves into F major here. And we wouldn't be losing anything from it. And any individual pattern that we've chosen here, we can hit to randomize here. And because we've locked our key, we're in a locked pattern within that. I could never play that, so I'll roll, I'll roll with that. Now, tempo wise, we can do things like half tempo. Or if we're particularly slow, maybe we want to double the tempo. As someone who usually works up at 174 BPM kind of range, I'll be doing that a lot more than this. But the option's there. Now, if we want to move up or down or active as well, that option's there for us. That's there for us if we want to work in that small range. Like I say, if we're working on a 25 key keyboard, you've got a narrow range and you might want to be able to move up and down octaves with say, just two keys, but use the same pattern, like a call and response kind of octave thing. If you're on a larger keyboard, you can pretty freely do the whole range. Depends what you've got. If you're on a two octave keyboard, you're kind of stuck there. Now we can mix things up and we've got some of that humanization in the fact that we can have our swing. We can have our swing set to quantize. If you don't understand how quantize relates to swing, I'll link a video there or will it be there? I don't know, somewhere on here that will give you a nice explanation of swing and quantize values. <clears throat> if we put on eighths, for example, it's gonna swing different sets of notes within that rhythm as it will on, say, fourths or sixteenths. Bring the dynamics right back. And this is, by default, going to be linked to your modulation wheel, so you can go real time and control exactly where you want to be. Which is a nice touch, right? Do we want our settings to be changed global here or just that individual pattern? Look, when we switch global off, beautiful. It's now going to be affecting just this pattern. And that also allows us to adjust our rotation point for where we want everything to start. Do we want that pause right at the start, for example? So we want that pause to be halfway. So you're able to rotate where you want your phrases to start. An invert allows us to bring our different notes to different parts of the octave as it's played. So like bringing the melody down to the bass and the bass up to the melody kind of thing. And just like we could with the chords, we can use this right here 
and drag everything into our DAW. And it's going to bring just that melody out for us. We're able to then play that with, well, anything, even if it doesn't work inside complete. So right there is an introduction to the new tools that have been added in Contact 8. I hope it was helpful for you and I hope it gives you some real creative freedom. It's very useful to know that you can take that MIDI out and drop it to anything else in your door. They're not limiting you to working with your Contact instruments, but it's clear that Contact is becoming the powerhouse for where native instruments are gonna put all of their future sounds. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please do throw it in the comments below. Thank you very much. Take care. See you soon.